Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Condensers, types, applications, selection, and design considerations. In this video course, you will learn the types of condensers, analysis of individual type of condensers, applications and selection criteria, and design considerations. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. Now subscribe now before you forget. Condenser is a type of heat exchanger widely used in chemical process industries. Typical applications include separation processes such as distillation, process heaters such as feed vaporizers in reactor system, etc. The knowledge and understanding of the various types of condensers is the first step in the selection and design of condensers for a given application. For operation engineers, it is equally important to understand why a particular type of heat exchanger is selected for a given application. The change of vapor phase to liquid phase of a fluid during the process of heat transfer in an exchanger is called condensation. The change of vapor phase to liquid phase occurs at one temperature for a pure component at a constant pressure. This temperature of condensation is termed the saturation temperature. Since the pressure of the system is almost constant, the condensation takes place isothermally for a pure vapor. Condensation occurs by two different mechanisms, namely dropwise condensation and film condensation. The nature of the condensation depends on whether the condensate or the liquid formed from the condensation process wets or does not wet the solid surface of heat transfer. This figure illustrates the two types of condensation processes. The figure here describes the film condensation process, where the vapor on coming into contact with the holder heat turns the surface, condenses. The condensate formed wets the surface and the film is formed by the condensing vapor as shown. In the figure B, the vapor comes into contact with the coated surface and the condensation starts. In this process, condensate does not wet the surface. Instead, droplets are formed as shown. If the liquid or the condensate wets the surface and flows on the surface as film, it is termed film condensation. When the condensate formed from the vapors does not wet the solid surface and accumulates as droplets, it is called dropwise condensation. In the film condensation process, the continuous liquid film formed on the surface provides stronger resistance to heat transfer. For this reason, heat transfer coefficient is 4 to 8 times higher for dropwise condensation as compared to film condensation. Dropwise condensation needs a polished or clean surface. This requirement is difficult to meet in industrial applications where the heat transfer surface is rarely clean except during the startup period due to fouling or accumulation of dirt on the surface. Hence, the nature of condensation is normally film condensation. The forthcoming discussion on condensation focuses on film condensation. Irrespective of the type of condensation mechanism, the heat transfer coefficient of condensing vapor is approximately 10 times greater than convective transfer coefficient. This is due to the high rate of energy transfer across the heat transfer surface due to release of latent heat. Types of condensers 
The first step in the design of condenser is to select the type of condenser or condenser configuration. Condensers are classified into two types, horizontal condensers and vertical condensers. This classification is based on the orientation of tubes. That is, the tubes are horizontally oriented or vertically oriented. Horizontal condensers are further classified in the horizontal in-shell condensers and horizontal in-tube condensers. Similarly, vertical condensers are divided into vertical in-shell condensers and vertical in-tube condensers. We will discuss some in detail one by one. Horizontal condensers Horizontal in-shell condensers In horizontal in-shell condensers, the condensation occurs in the shell. The coolant is admitted on the tube side. This is the most commonly used type of condensers. The condensing vapor forms a film on the outside tube surface. The film falls subsequently from the tubes at higher level to the lower tubes. This increases the local turbulence and hence the heat transfer coefficient. Shown in this figure is a horizontal in-shell condenser. This is a TMO type condenser with removable bundle. Baffles in horizontal in-shell condensers are oriented with a cut vertical to permit easy drainage of condensate and avoid the possibility of flooding in the upward cross flow sections. Horizontal in-tube condensers In horizontal in-tube condensers, the condensation occurs inside horizontal tubes. This class of condensers include conventional cell and tube heat exchangers, kettle type and horizontal thermosiphon reboilers and air-cooled condensers. The main disadvantage of the horizontal condenser with condensation inside the tubes is that the condensate accumulates and builds in the tubes. And this creates greater resistance heat transfer, thus reducing the effective heat transfer coefficient. Illustrated in this figure is an example of horizontal in-tube condenser, which is a kettle type reboiler used for distillation columns. When the vapor flow rate is low, the condensate formed accumulates at the bottom surface of the tubes. This figure illustrates the progress of condensation and accumulation of condensate in the case of condensation of vapors in horizontal tubes with low vapor flow rate. When the vapor flow rate is very high, the flow regime is different. This figure illustrates the progress of condensation and growing thickness of the liquid film in the condensation of vapors in horizontal tubes in high vapor flow rate. The flow regime is two-phase annular flow as shown. Vertical condensers Vertical in-shell condensers In vertical in-shell condensers, the condensation occurs on the shell side of the condenser's vertical tubes. The major issue with this class of condenser is that the condenser's downflow is intercepted by the presence of baffles. Shown in this figure is a vertical in-shell condenser. To reduce the hindrance, for the condensate flow, the baffle cut is restricted to maximum of 40 to 50 percent of the shell diameter. If subcooling is needed, condensate level is maintained in the shell bottom by means of a valve. Vertical in tube condensers. In vertical in tube condensers, the condensation occurs inside condensers' vertical tubes. 
This type of condenser is used in internal reflux applications as in distillation columns or wind condenser for vapor recovery in reactors or distillation columns. In the wind condenser application, a relatively small amount of condensable vapor in the reactor wind gas is recovered thereby improving operational efficiency and complying with emission norms. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec Elon channel is a one-stop learning and skill development channel for your career. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button right now. In reflux condensers, a small amount of light tends or condensed and returned as reflux. Reflux condensers installed at the column top are widely used in chemical and petrochemical industries in distillation columns. Vertical in-tube condensers are of two types, upflow condenser and downflow condenser. Shown in this figure is a vertical in-tube upflow condenser. The vapor rises up the tubes and the condensate flows down the tube wall counter currently and drips back into the reactor. One of the problem with in-tube upflow condensers is entrainment of the liquid on the tube wall by the upflowing vapor. If the vapor velocity is high enough, the vapor shear can restrict the drainage of condensate. The resulting increase of thickness of the condensate adds to the heat transfer resistance and reduces the heat transfer coefficient. In the worst case, it can lead to flooding in the tube. Hence, the design of reflux condenser need to be given due consideration to these issues. Illustrated in this figure is a wind condenser installed in a deethanizer column. In this vertical in-tube condenser, the vapor and condensate flow co-currently. This flow arrangement prevents flooding in the tube due to vapor shear effect noticed in counter-current flow arrangement. The advantage of column top reflux condenser is that no vapor piping is required as the condenser is inserted at the top of the column as an integral unit. Total condenser versus partial condenser. A total condenser is one in which the entire overhead vapor from distillation column is condensed and liquid is the only product. Part of the condensed product is returned to the column as reflux under flow control. The balanced liquid is withdrawn as a distillate product under level control. In a total condenser, the vapor and liquid phase composition is the same. A partial condenser is one in which part of the vapor is condensed and returned to the column as reflux. The balanced quantity is withdrawn as vapor product. There will be a vapor liquid separation. The partial condenser acts as an equilibrium stage and the vapor phase is in equilibrium with the liquid. A partial condenser at a pressure P and operating at temperature T satisfies the condition T bubble point is less than T which is less than or equal to T D point. There will be a vapor film with a high concentration of high boiling component. The heat transfer coefficient determined not by the thermal resistance alone but also by the mass transfer resistance. The condensable component has to diffuse through the non-condensable components. This diffusion resistance causes reduction in heat transfer coefficient. This figure illustrates the concentration profile from the bulk of the vapor to the wall in a total condenser and a partial condenser. The concentration profile is a straight line in total condenser, whereas in partial condenser, the concentration decreases from the bulk of the fluid to the wall due to diffusion resistance in the vapor film. Hence, for partial condensers, 
The preferred condenser configuration is horizontal in-shell condenser. Vertical in-tube condensers can be considered for vapors containing non-condensables. Temperature profile in condensers In the case of pure component vapor condensation, the condensing temperature is constant if the pressure drop is reasonable. Even though the inlet and exit temperature of the hot medium is the same, the condensing of the fluid produces the heat transfer. The coolant may or may not undergo phase change. Reboilers are a typical case of coolant undergoing phase change on the shell side or steam or vapor condensing on the tube side. Illustrated in this figure is a temperature profile for a condenser which uses condensing steam to heat water. The steam is losing only the latent heat, hence the hot stream temperature profile is constant. TH in and TH out are the same. Certain condensers handle superheated vapors for condensation. After desuperheating and condensation, the condensate may also undergo subcooling before it is removed from the bottom of the condenser. In desuperheating, the sensible heat is removed first to desuperheat the vapor to obtain saturated vapor. Then condensation of the vapor occurs. The condensed vapor gets subcooled by extraction of sensible heat below the condensing temperature. This figure illustrates the temperature profile of condenser with the D superheating and subcooling. The mean temperature difference and heat and the coefficient can be calculated individually for each section if the degree of superheat or subcooling is large. The weighted mean temperature difference and the overall heat and the coefficient can be used to design the condensers if the heat load due to sensible heat transfer in each unit is about 25% of the heat load due to latent heat transfer. Otherwise, it is convenient to design separate distributed heating and subcooling exchanges. If the vapor condensing is a mixer, with or without non-condensable, the condensing temperature will not be constant. The temperature profile has to be estimated in accordance with the VLE data. This figure illustrates the temperature profile of vapor mixer condensing in counter current flow condenser. The condensing temperature is changing as the fraction of the condensed vapor changes. The shape of the curve depends on the vapor liquid equilibrium. The accurate determination of LMTD needs use of software. As an approximation, a straight line may be assumed to make a rough estimate of the LMTD. Condensers Selection Criteria Selection of suitable types of condensers depend on several factors which include total condensation, partial condensation, pure or single vapor, multi component vapor, vapor having non-condensable. Other factors to be considered from the point of view of allocating fluids and selection of team or type are fouling nature of the coolant, fouling nature of the vapor, pressure drop, corrosive nature of the vapor. As discussed in the previous videos titled Heat Exchanger Design Considerations Part 1, the fouling and corrosive fluid is put on the tube side. Cleaning of the tube side is much easier, be it mechanical cleaning or chemical cleaning. Vapors are usually clean and non-corrosive unless they contain corrosive components such as water and acid gases. Hence, horizontal initial condenser is the most widely used type of condenser. 
In the case of film based condensation, horizontal condenser give higher heat transfer coefficient than vertical condensers. In film based condensation, the thickness of the condensed film over the heat transfer surface determines the heat transfer coefficient. The condenser travels less distance in horizontal initial condenser. The distance traveled by the condensate over the tube surface before falling to the bottom of the shell is less compared to vertical condensers. Hence, the average film thickness is higher in vertical condensation. Thus, the lower condensed film thickness in horizontal condenser contributes to higher heat transfer coefficient. However, in the case of shells having very large diameter, the condenser travels much longer distance before being collected at the bottom and hence thickness of the condensate tend to be higher. In such cases, the difference between the heat transfer coefficients becomes smaller depending on the size of the shell. In general, vertical condensers are selected for applications including distillation units where the heat duty is small. For large heat duties, the preferred choice is horizontal in shell condensers. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finish viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.